so good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for coming along to the early slot um, for making the effort. Um, I'm Wendy Darling, and I'm the managing director of Invicta Telecare, a company based in Kent, um, but providing telecare services um, throughout the UK. So. What are we here for today? Well, um, we've been really looking at um, how we can support the journey of people receiving health and care services um, using technology and using um, services that sit behind that technology to fully integrate them. We're all familiar of the drive to keep people living in their own homes, in the home of their choice for longer. Um, and we believe that there is um, technology and support that can enable that to happen for longer. So, who are we? Well, Invicta Telecare is part of a wider um, group. We're a, a housing group known as Circle, consisting of nine housing associations. Um, around about 65,000 properties are within that, that group. Um, and we cover rural locations, um, urban locations. We're in London, East Anglia, um, throughout the southeast, and up into the West Midlands. As well as the housing organisations within the group, we also have ourselves in Victor Telecare, and I'll talk about that a little more, bit more in a minute, and also a care and support provider. So Circle Support provide um, care services to, to support uh, people to live independently in their own home. In terms of Invicta, um, we provide services to all that group, but that only actually represent, represents less than 15% of our customer base. So most of our customers that we work with are external parties. A little bit more about Invicta. We support um, round about 100,000 people uh, within the UK. Um, we're the largest independent uh, monitoring provider or provider of telecare services, handle round about 2 million calls every year. As well as our telecare offering, we also provide some ancillary services that support that offering. So for organisations that are um, offering support services, for instance, we provide loan worker monitoring. We provide telephone calls handling services for helplines and things like that. And we're starting to really um, uh, work on our journey into the telehealth field. We're part of the Three Million Lives initiative. Um, this is an initiative where the um, industry leads are engaging directly with the Department of Health to bring about the integration of telehealth and telecare um, into the, the care pathway. So what's different about Invicta? If you look across the UK, there is probably around about two, 200, 230 monitoring organisations such as ourselves. As I say, we're one of the largest. Um, but we have also really looked at how the market is changing. Quite uniquely, uh, what we've done is invested in, in technology within the centre that will enable us to de deliver more flexible services to um, customers, to a wider range of customers and to customers using a whole variety of equipment. Um, we ensure that we, we, we work very closely with our customers as, as partners to really understand what they're trying to deliver. Um, and then we can support them through technology, through our backup service, to really integrate everything that, that's happening. Obviously, as part of Circle Group, uh, we have our housing specialists within the group. They're um, concentrating, focusing on things like welfare reform, digital inclusion, and um, supporting social isolation. And we believe that the services that we can offer really help that. Um, social isolation is a social isolation is a very um, uh, you know can really impact someone's health and well-being. So actually, by joining our services up together, we believe that we can improve the client's. Um, uh, well-being and enable them to stay living at home longer. Uh, 
I mentioned earlier Circle Support. Um, Circle Support, as I say, delivers care and support services to people. So whilst we're at the, in the background, if you like, taking the calls, managing the data, case management, um, they're out there delivering the um, service to the individual in terms of support and care um, to enable that person to, to remain longer um, at home. In terms of customers, our clients, Circle Supports clients, come from a, with a range of needs, older people, people with learning disabilities, mental health um, issues, uh, physical disabilities, um, addiction, all sorts of different um, client groups. And we believe that actually by working together we can target the needs of those people to really make a difference. Okay, so I've mentioned a little bit about how we're working together. What we've, what we've drawn up is really a, a blueprint for prevention. Um, we're trying to uh, use our services to mis mitigate the risks that, that would usually trigger to some, someone to move into residential care or into the hospital um, environment. Um, we are keen to really maintain someone at home. So bringing services and technical technology solutions to the home to keep them um, safe and monitor their well-being. We're, we're trying a, a, a really holistic um, approach, not just focusing on the services we provide and the, the sort of formal care network provide, but really trying to bring in informal carers and the wider community to support that person. This is really where we, where we started our journey. This, you may actually recognize this. It's part of the three million live um, ecosystem, really. And it, it actually um, recognizes the, um, the sort of multidisciplinary teams that are involved in someone's care, so through um, GP, nurse, occupational therapist, etc., right through to the pharmacists, hospital, um, and as I say, formal and informal carers um, and the, the wider network. So we've based our model really on this uh, model going forward. So to make it real, this is how we've sort of tried to simplify things. Um, we've, we've, um, we, t we target our services to really aim at the needs of the individual and the level of intervention that that individual feels comfortable with. So nothing is forced on them. The, the, the important thing is the client engages with their care and engages with their support. Um, so therefore, when we're looking at devices, for instance, to help that person stay at home, we're looking for things that are familiar for them. So this BYOD, bring your own device, really recognises that they will continue to use something that's very similar to, to um, devices that they're already familiar with. Um, we, uh, our platform enables, as I said earlier, a wide range of um, uh, equipment to interlink with it, and that's really vital. We don't link ourselves with any particular manufacturer. We think it's really important that the customer chooses the equipment that fits their needs best. So we've invested in a platform that enables anything to link into it. And with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled devices, the client at home can really um, send the data in something in a format that's very familiar to them, using devices that are very familiar to them. Um, We've also gone mobile. We recognise that actually people living at home, it's not just about living at home, it's about being able to go out into the local community in a safe way. Um, so we're, we've included um, GPS technology, geofencing, geolocation, so that people can be protected when they're out and about. Dementia sufferers, a typical example, um, may have a regular pattern of walking to the paper shop or something every day. We don't want to stop that. We don't want to keep people in their home. We want them to enjoy a normal and um, full, full life. Um, but clearly we need to protect them and, and ensure that they're secure and safe when they are out. Um, so the technology will allow them to do their routine trip to the, the paper shop. 
Um, but if they do go beyond um, an established area, then it, at least it erases an alert to us that we can follow up on and just make sure that everything's okay and they're not um, confused and lost somewhere. So in summary, um, we've really, we're really engaging with our customers, both as the individual and the corporate customer that we work with. Um, we're listening to them, we're un endeavoring to understand um, how they work, how they want to work. Um, we've taken a very pragmatic but a robust approach to data management. Data is a very powerful tool when you're supporting someone. Um, so we have clearly need to ensure that all that data is, is confidential and is very secure, but we need to also ensure that the carers and people looking after that person have appropriate access to that data so they can really understand what's going on and target their role to help support that person. We don't buy a gadget. We, um, we want our customers to buy the service. The gadget is very secondary. The gadget is really down to the needs of the client and that's a really important fact. Um, there's all sorts of technology, you'll see loads out on the stands, some really, really impressive uh, technology, but actually is it appropriate to the particular client that we're supporting? Is something very simple all that's required? So it's really important for us that the care network, the, the, the wider network um, and the client is able to, to secure the piece of equipment that they want to use that will we, and we will then link it into our service and make sure that the, the holistic approach is taken to how that person is supported. Um, we're really looking at how we can work with our partners to de uh, deliver um, new models of care, very flexible uh, models of care. So we're working collaboratively with um, the care, with housing, with health, um, and really trying to reach out to the broader network to, to provide something that's really flexible. Um, and we believe that it's important to work in that way, to work collaboratively, collaboratively um, to understand the needs of the cl clinicians and the commissioners of these services um, and the multidisciplinary team so that we can um, really help to support the outcomes that that, that team and that commissioner is trying to achieve. So I think there's a few minutes for questions. Um, can I just, before we uh, kick off for questions, we have um, Victoria Byer in the audience who's actually really helped us as part of this, the Circle and Invicta journey to deliver some of these models. So she's got a little bit more operational knowledge. Um, so if you want to come up and join me, Victoria. And as I say, any questions? We're very happy to take them. I think there's a microphone coming round. So, uh, wave at us. No? Nothing? <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Testing? Yeah, very Thank good, you. very good. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to ask in terms of obviously the technology's there but actually it's actually getting the local authorities and the CCGs to in actual fact um, implement it within their assessments and looking at the uh, care packages that are actually needed as well. Uh, how do you feel um, that you're progressing with that and what are the blocks? Um, what we've, we've, we've um, really trying to do is help that sort of initial assessment process. Um, so really bringing in very um, easy ways that someone can do an assessment, uh, a professional can do an assessment and understand the technology that may be appropriate to support that person. So we're trying to sort of really take it back to the individual um, and at that point of, of assessing their needs, um, giving that sort of education and um, information um, to the professional doing that assessment to enable them to make some you know, to, 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 to suggest and maybe recommend something that may be appropriate. So we've, we've, we're designing a sort of very um, standard um, uh, assessment tool 
um, that actually gives information about the type of systems that may help. What, what you say what, uh, about your product or your service uh, yes. makes a lot of sense, but do you have any evidence about the improvement in non-clinical outcomes for the areas that you've served? Do you want to take that? Um, it's, it's very difficult to prove outcomes in both a qualitative and quantitative way, but we are working um, to deliver outcomes-based products and services. So, for example, we've uh, developed uh, a local based service with one of our um, London boroughs regarding a home from hospital COPD telehealth integrated with our domiciliary care floating support and 24-7 response but they're still early days and the, and the criteria for giving that evidence is going to take a longer period of time than the shorter phased pilot study similar to what's been seen in the whole system demonstrator and other services that are being delivered so I think we can feel that there's tangible benefits from the client's response and also from the patient themselves directly feeling care and support in a different kind of way but to give professional evidence base referred through um, you know educational specialists and certainly we're working towards that but it will take a longer time for us to be able to give that referencing. Okay, well we're done. I mean, Victoria and I will be around for a while if there's anything that you wanted to talk to us about outside this meeting, be very happy to, to answer any further questions. Thanks very much.